I ended up with some of my last tour, I was flying on the ground. Oh, that's a dress for all 72 yeah, well, I did my first shackle tour there, 63 to 65. gentlemen thank you all so much for coming uh, it's really great seeing you all so um, if uh, I can first introduce a gentleman you all know very well who actually served at Weymouth uh, at Chickerell in World War II and this is of course Mr Peter Price yes I have uh, quite a long memory about this place because uh, before all these houses were built, it was a nice big field, and this area was gone through Weymouth. And just up the road was the isolation hospital. If you had cancer, you'd end up there. But uh, since then, it's all been filled in. This was a very active service during the war, and uh, I, 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 I personally went from Normandy to Berlin. And when I was, I was emptied back because I was very poorly. Then I came here, and I was in charge of cancer. I was in charge of transport, we used to go up to up and down from Town Rushton in Blanford with supplies and uh, it was a very active station with the air sea rescue and then it's been in, in the RF service for many many years. And this is one of my young cadets, Colin Pomeroy, we've known each other for years and uh, I'm very pleased that this has eventually developed into a lovely memorial for our guests and our friends. Well, I was, I'm much later Vincent and Peter, but I was here merely as an air cadet and we were here right until the camp closed and I can remember the Army Air Corps coming down here with their Oster aircraft and barrage balloons in the summer with the, with the TA jumping out on the airfield doing their parachute practice and then the cadets moved to the Nove and that's where this fine bunch of ladies and gentlemen are today. Well, thank you very much. Uh, now, I won't naturally hold you long for obvious reasons. So much to mention about Chickerell's history, but there are one or two points just worth quickly mentioning. Contrary to what is initially thought elsewhere, the airfield actually opened before 1918. There's a very obscure record at the National Archives in London that absolutely confirms that there was a military landing ground here. The previous year and maybe even for fighters we're still trying to work it out but it was certainly open the previous year then as is well known it was used by a uh, Royal Air Force Squadron number 241 in 1918 for anti-submarine patrols so these biplane trainers flying about 70 miles an hour either with a tiny bomb on board or an observer and no bomb but they played a major part in the winning of World War I and defeating the German U-boat threat. After World War I, it's again thought that there was naval flying here in the late 1920s, and that's true, but deep level research has now also confirmed that there was early flying here uh, by 1923. For example, People on the promenade at Weymouth were absolutely fascinated to see these early naval biplanes making these bombing manoeuvres on the fleet parked in Portland Harbour. There was one occasion a, an aircraft actually dived in the sea in front of hundreds of people watching. Thankfully everyone was okay. Then uh, there was a little bit of gliding here. Then of, of course it's commemorated by Cobham Drive. There were two of Sir Alan Cobham's flying displays here in the first half of the 1930s that proved very successful. The big turning point came not long after that. Initially, Weymouth Town Council had actually bought the land for an agricultural show. And then this, as this just had happened, the Air Ministry decided to acquire Chessel Bank for the bombing and firing range. So this is when Chickerell got heavily involved along with Warmwell where we unveiled one of our similar memorials last November. World War II's history is very vague, but from what we can discern, 
Chicklow had a connection as a dispersal come forward airfield for Warmwell and then as is perhaps best remembered after World War II there were various aircraft notably early helicopters that were based here for the fleet air arm so they, they did some very good work including one occasion the air lifted a very sick child to Bristol when every, every, everywhere was snowed in here and, and the baby's life was saved so that was good eventually the, the, the airfield was finally closed in 1959 and I mean, I've been here on and off since the 1980s in a more private capacity but it hasn't really changed much I mean this is of course all that is left of the old entrance road so this is a fantastic location for the memorial so uh, all I would just otherwise uh, simply say to you is that as regards our airfields in general please do all you possibly can to try and help save them honor them both them and of course all the people who have served here over the years ever since 1909 they play such an enormous part in our everyday lives and we just cannot remotely afford to lose these places uh, they help us so much so please just do everything you can to help them and therefore um, thank you all very much again for coming and we are really honored to be able to unveil what is now our 126th memorial to in this case yet another of Britain's unique and irreplaceable assets Chickerel Airfield. Thank you all very much. <laughs> now just uh, maybe sort of just if you lift the yeah. thing there. Okay, just, I'll give you a wee hand.